let's get up to about and see what it'll do from the roll. Well, that other okay, thing, yeah, that was Ken, oh, wow. holy mackerel. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is for real, man. I like this. Hey, boys and girls, welcome to Monroe Live, and guess what? I got John McElroy with me. Oh, yeah, and we also have <laughs> the Tesla Model Plaid. Which is why you got John McElroy. Exactly, exactly. John McElroy has been on this journey since 2013, 2014, when I started uh, making noise about uh, EVs, and uh, here we are. So it seemed only appropriate that in our first little picture of the, uh, of the Plaid, we got a chance to have John with us. So we, uh, we're gonna give you the first impressions um, right now, uh, talk a little bit about what we found, what we like, what may be a bit of an issue, and, um, and yeah, let's just go from there. So you've had a chance to see the car. What did you find? Well, a couple of things. I, the Plaid, I'm dying to get in this thing and drive <clears throat> it. This is probably the best performance sedan in the world. At least that's what they're saying. I well, can't I'm wait to, to figure it out. I'm pretty sure it is, and I'm pretty sure it's the fastest production car ever. So, uh, so that those two things, I'm 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 uh, almost positive we're going to find that that's that's what's going to happen here. Okay. Then the other thing is, it's got the yoke. I got to drive yeah. the yoke, Sandy. I want to yeah. find out what that's all about. Well, and then one other thing, just you know, walking around, eyeballing the car, build quality pretty good there's a few issues but yeah. overall it looks pretty good yeah well we uh, we actually used the gap gauge and um, and we didn't find that many things that uh, that we didn't like um, one small issue here and if we go with line of sight you'll never see it but this gap is uh, much tighter than that but overall um, that's pretty much the only thing I found now you said you found something else, right? Another? Well, there was you know, there's a, a gap in the back here where it walks out a bit, little bit. There's yeah. you know the, the gap grows and closes up again. There's a, an issue with the tail lamps, but again, it's people well, like you and yeah. I that are going to go through this right. thing that pick it up. Right. So the tail lamps. When we get back there, I'll show you what's going on. But I will tell you, um, I love the color. I haven't had a chance to drive this yet. Corey drove it back from the uh, from the showroom, and I love the seats. I, I mean, this, I know I have the money to buy one, but I, I just, I, I, I'd have a hard time justifying it. But I'm telling you what, this is a spectacular car. Let's go back and we'll have a look at the, um, at that, that one little flaw that, uh, that uh, Corey found actually, yeah. um, here in the tail lamp. So right here, right here you can see that, um, it, it looks different. It looks different than the rest of the headlamp or tail lamp, I should say. This happens when you do vibration welding. Sometimes if you, if you don't have it quite right, you wind up with that, uh, that ghosty white color. Um, it's a bubbling up process that happens sometimes with, uh, with vibration weldings. So that really, um, that's the biggest attraction that, that we found was just that one thing. So, uh, and by the way, I have to mention our friends at Sabic. Thank you so much for sponsoring us. I mean it sincerely. Um, we would have never got to where we got to if it wasn't for Sabic uh, tossing us a bone, and we are very appreciative. So, if you're going to buy some plastic, uh, John, I'll buy them from Sabic. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you. Let's just have a look at the trunk here. Okay, so this is pretty big but it gets bigger when you look down here and you find out that you're you've got a trunk and a trunk this is a lot of extra room and then you got this little smugglers compartment here which I kind of like in the corner so at the end of the day there's lots of places that you can store little things that that we're going to probably find interesting when we take the road trip um, starting, starting on Wednesday. So uh, Corey and myself and um, Eric are gonna, be, uh, are gonna be on the first leg and we're hoping that um, if you're on the flight path for how we're gonna be driving around, if you wanna stop in, that'd be wonderful. So let's try the, uh, let's try the, uh, the rear seats here. 
<clears throat> there we go. Without Corey, we can't get in. So, uh, super play. So, we see John getting in, and what's your verdict, John? Okay, I'm assuming the front seat's back about as far as it can go. It can, yeah. So, I, I'm even fitting in here. My only one complaint, not a lot of thigh support. Now, maybe once the seat goes forward and I can push my legs out, even then, you know, I, I, this is a, a pet peeve of mine, is getting good thigh support, which if you're taking a long trip, yeah. really helps. Like you said, they're very comfortable. That's the one thing that I'd like to see addressed. Well, like I said, the front seats is where I've been mostly. <laughs> and I'm pretty happy with those. So uh, luckily, Eric's in the back, so I don't care. You know, yeah. everybody <laughs> says, oh, it's only Eric. But you know what would be cool is if um, I know why they're like that. Um, these, um, um, the, the, the seats in that, uh, that console you can hear that it's it's an electric lock you push the button you can hear the little noise and whatnot and I think the reasoning behind that is so that they can get to a point where when everything's folded down you've got pretty much a flat surface right and probably we're going to use at least half of that uh, when we're traveling because it's right. going to be the three of us in this car yeah and I'm pretty sure that there's going to be um, there's going to be a need to uh, I need to to have things uh, working here, so let's let's do this. Um, I know you're dying to try the yoke, so I'm going to be a good host and let you sit in it first. Go ahead. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> so I think it looks cool. I can't wait to drive it. You know, uh, what I had anticipated is kind of like a Formula One car. I was expecting lock to lock. I understand that's not the, the case. I would love to see Tesla add speed sensitive steering on this. So if you're at very low speed and you turn the, the wheel, the wheels turn a lot. But at higher speeds, when you turn the wheel, the, wheel, the, the front wheels don't turn as much. I think if you had speed sensitive steering on this, it would dramatically, I, everybody in the, the rest of the industry would follow suit <clears> on this. Well, the reason that I like it is, number one, it gets rid of something in the way of the instrument panel. And number two, it's a lot easier to get in and out of this than it is out of the, um, out of the i3 that I, I'm, I've been driving around. Oh. Or the i3. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Tesla 3 that the I've Tesla been driving three. around. So I'm, um, I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited about that. Now, if this had electric steering, that would be a piece of cake to uh, to make a change. That could be OTA. So um, we haven't torn it apart yet, but if this does have electric steering, which I'm hoping it does, then what I'd like to see is uh, is that modification myself. Mm -hmm. So um, hey, who knows? It's Tesla. Maybe it's an over-the-air update down the road. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm hoping for. The other thing you notice is that it's got a second um, a second instrument panel. So um, that one you can touch it all day long it doesn't do anything um, you're talking about light. the cluster right here yeah that yeah. and um and and quite frankly um corey pointed something out i haven't driven this thing yet hopefully soon uh but uh but um the right and left turn signals are right there on your left side yeah right there um so that's kind of like uh cool it has a, a headlamp um indicator now on the three, I haven't, I haven't touched the headlamps ever. Uh, they're all fully automatic. They high beam, low beam, whatever beam I need, depending on what the, uh, what the conditions are outside, it just goes on. So I've been spoiled by that. Same thing as the windshield wiper and stuff like that. All I do is press the button and say wipers on and boom, done. So I'm assuming that all those things are the same. And then if you look at the icon on the main screen, um, it looks pretty much the same as what I'd see if I was in my my Tesla uh, Model 3 and um, And I think that that's a really good idea making it so that you can move from one vehicle to the next without without any kind of uh, issue I think is a really good idea so the uh, the other thing that we noticed too is hey John can you just push the uh, the 
the little cover for the console. Just push it once. Okay, it goes up halfway. Push it again a little bit. And then it'll close up completely. That's pretty slick. Yeah, I like that. I don't know how you do that. I know how you can do a dampered close, but I don't know how you do it twice. So I've never seen that before. Let's have a look at the frunk. Can you uh, press the uh, frunk thing? It says open. Nope, where it says open. There we go. All right, so this is uh, something that I looked at and um, <clears throat> I like the fact that I've got more storage. And for those of you guys who said, oh yeah, you only use it 10% of the time. And the 10% of the time that you absolutely flat out need it, it's very handy to have. So I'm looking at what's going on here. This is a lot of extra room. And I'm thinking that there's more going on underneath there than, um, than, uh, we, than, than what meets the eye right now. But one of the things that I, I don't like is the fact that I have to pull this thing down. And I really would like to see, um, I would really like to see Tesla do what some of the aftermarket guys are doing and making this just the same as the trunk. So it opens and closes. Now, even if it doesn't do that, this could have a kicker in it. So, okay. So it could pop up to a certain amount and then the kicker could push it up to about there. And what happens then is, instead of having a lot of elaborate mechanism, all I need to do is, this looks like about two or three inches, and then it would take over, the shocks would take over. So I, th I think that if I was gonna make one suggestion right off the bat, I'd love to see this thing so it pops up and down. I mean, nobody has it, but I don't see any reason why we shouldn't say have it. It'd, it'd separate them <coughs> from the rest, because I haven't seen anybody do that in production. Yeah. Aftermarket, yeah. And hell, if you want to make this the premium uh, luxury car, another way to set it apart is doing what you're talking yeah. about. Well, currently, it's, uh, it's, if it's not the premium luxury car, I, I'm not 100% sure what is. But uh, I really would like to see, um, I really like to see that feature. And, uh, and that, would be, that would be something that I, I like the idea of pull down as well. It's always been good for uh, luggage and things like that. Yeah, you know, you're right, because in a normal hood, you're not popping the hood open for anything. For no. vehicles with a frunk, you're yeah. using it a whole lot more. So I like yeah. what you're talking about there. Yeah. What do you think? Let's go drive. Come on. Well, we got to do something. Okay, let's buckle up. Nobody trusts my driving. So, let's do one thing before we, uh, we get started. We discovered something new that, um, that I think you should know about on the interiors. So, focus down here. You got it? Okay. Watch this. maybe it gives you storage here and then you can move this back and now you got big storage and now you got this you got that you got this you got that holy mackerel this thing is like <laughs> loaded with little dampers so anyways um first let me i don't know what big guy got in here before but let me just uh, see if we can back up. So forward and back is a little different in this car. Um, all we do is, all we do, all we do is that gives us forward and that gives us reverse. So I guess even more, uh, oh, this t pedal is very touchy. Hmm. I seem to be having more success with the yoke and, um, and the backup camera than I do with the three. This seems to be more mm, my style. I like it. And uh, like Corey said, um, he has a tendency to um, he has a tendency to spin this thing around and you know what? I think that's a good idea. 
Oh, okay, so they told me to be careful. They didn't tell me they were throwing stuff out in the backyard either. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's go. Are you ready, John? Not yet. Let's Not get out yet. of the parking lot. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to do the rocket ship thing. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, this is a lot more going on here than just... Uh, let's go right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I, we got the new steering wheel. Um, new steering wheel stuff. You know, I've noticed something... Um, I've noticed something um, with Tesla. If there's a rule... Oh, that's nice gives you a nice little acceleration and it's barely touching it oh I don't know John this may be too good for you I don't know <laughs> <laughs> it might be too good for me but I still got to try it anyway well I tell you what I'm already used to uh, getting the turn signals here uh, on the steering wheel yeah I like um, that uh, with it right on the wheel yeah and here's the thing I kind of like the idea of okay let's see what it'll do okay miles an hour in how many seconds uh, I don't know I wasn't counting <laughs> I was watching the road <laughs> well it's a good thing I was counting and you were watching the road <laughs> perfect <laughs> okay it's quick so it's, for sure it's, it's quick. very very quick so um, because I've got that um, that dinner meeting tonight and I'm pretty much satisfied, happy, whatever with everything I I actually I can feel my my cheeks getting rosy. Yeah. So um tap to park. And there oh, we are. Interesting. Holy mackerel, this thing's way back too. Let me just move up here a smidge. <coughs> That's just me. So, swipe up for forward. There you go. Lost cat. Hmm. Just press it twice. No, press the same there twice. We go. There you go. Okay, so let's get up to about and see what it'll do from a roll. Well, that other okay, thing there we that are. was done was 10. Oh, wow. Woody Mackerel! Yeah, 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 yeah. This is for real, man. I like this. So I've driven the Lucid Air Dream Edition and from a this has got more instant punch to it. Okay, That's so really when I turned car. around the corner and, and let it go, we were at like 50 or something like that. It wasn't... Well, we can check with the uh, with the cameras and everything. And then let's just do it from a mile of an hour roll, too. Let me slow down here a sec. There we go. Three, two, one. Yeah. You feel a little mackerel. bit of wheel, wheel spin, yeah. almost. Just a, just a hair. But, but you know what you do feel is the, the front end lifting off. Yeah, yeah. But let's get back down to that roll, because that's... I'm telling you, that's really, that's better than off the line. There we go. <laughs> that's fun. That's fun. Yes, you're right. So my uh, initial reaction in driving the the yoke, I'm, I, I, obviously, the more I drive, the more I'll get used to it. I don't like it offhand. Like I said, You know we what? Back I find my shot. thumbs are going right into the right place. Yeah. Uh, it no, feels like an airplane uh, yoke. Actually. Totally agree. So when I'm driving straight like this, no problem. But when you're turning, it's, it's Well, you know awkward. what I did? I had a natural tendency to pull my thumb around and and the thing's right in my hand. Right. But no. remember, do you remember that old Thunderbird that had the... Uh, that had uh, the uh, the yoke as well, and the EPA or somebody made it, or the Nishta folks, somebody made them get rid of it. <clears throat> that thing was ridiculous because you had to turn it thirty times in order to uh, in order to get around a corner. It was the old-fashioned um, what do you call it ball system. But see, like th this is awkward, you know. 
So that's why I say if it was speed sensitive, yeah. you know, that would solve everything. Okay, John. You have a big, a big smile on your face. If you had false teeth, they'd fall right out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? Uh, I want it. I want it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if what, what, what's this? About one hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars, something like that. I think we paid one hundred and thirteen thousand. One hundred and thirteen. So, so this one doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It's got almost everything. Who cares? Well, I, I don't either. I mean, I mean, this is. Look, even <clears throat> though this car is what ten years old, the body style it still looks really good to me. Uh, it's because you don't see too many of them. Well, out here in our neck yeah. of the woods, you know, and you go to California, it's a different story. But still, I think it's a really handsome looking car. God, do I love the performance of this I can't, thing. I can't believe it. I've never done that roll. Mm -hmm. I've always been 10, 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, like when we did, and it got But when you did the roll, I felt my stomach coming up to my nose. And the only other time that that happened was I got a ride in a, in a, in a fighter jet. And I'm telling you what, that definitely has a, has a tendency to, to make things happen. This came as close as you can come to, to flying in a fighter jet. This is really spectacular. That roll thing, uh, and, and we don't have the fast tires. We've got, uh, we've got all terrain tire, tires on here. Yeah. And we don't have it on uh, highest level. We don't have a ludicrous mode either. So, I mean, I, everything about this car, the, the minor defects, I could find that on a Bentley. I mean it. There's there's no there's no chance that this is anything anything but a magnificent example of what a car could and should be. So anyway, boys and girls, that's gonna be a wrap. Again, thanks to the folks at Sabic for uh, for giving us uh, the, the the money we needed to to basically close the gap and make this make this trip happen. Thank you, John. I appreciate you, you coming down. Sure thing. And in 13 more years, uh, you know, we'll still be doing it, I guess. <laughs> Can't find a steady job. So <clears throat> anyways, thanks for watching and we'll be and stay tuned because we're going on the road trip starting on Wednesday and we'll have reports out uh, for everyone uh, to have a look at. And I can hardly wait. This is going to be a this is going to be a good trip. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys. Bye.